at nine minutes of, here he comes again, James Bond, tracked, chased, beat upon by yet another group of villains, another Bond thriller, this time of you to kill. Watch this. Whoops. All this week, bye-bye, big guy. <laughs> All this week, the James Bond mystique, Roger Moore, uh, is going to bring us 007 for the seventh time. Uh, it is as much fun to play Bond as it is to watch him. Big question. Well, recently Roger Moore was here and we talked about surviving the making of his latest Bond escapade. Well, when I, I saw the rough cut a couple of months ago, I suddenly realized why I was so tired. Because there's probably more action in this one than, than in the others. It really just goes, 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 goes. Uh, but we were doing it in rather pleasant places. Right. There was not the heat of India or of Thailand. Right. We, we were in Paris and in Chantilly and, of course, in San Francisco. So that at the end of a, a working day, you have some way that you can go and eat in comfortable surroundings and not have to worry about what you're eating. What happened in I understand what the Eiffel Tower? Yeah. Did something happen in the, what, the, the elevator or the lift or whatever broke or something? What happened? Uh, oh, for, in terms of exercise, so that's, that's absolutely, well, this is where I get my exercise. We, to get to where we were shooting, what the, in the Eiffel Tower has the top level where people go and it has the restaurant level at the bottom. And there is a middle level, which is the service area. And the elevators would take us all up there and the crew and the, all the equipment. But when it came to going down, until 6 o'clock in the evening, they weren't going to stop on that middle section. So at lunchtime, it meant walking down. And all of a sudden, your legs are just following one after the other, and you can feel the leg muscles going, which is supposed to be good for skiing. Right. But then I had a feeling it was all going to collapse, because you can see through the holes in the ironwork as you go down. It's very weird. <laughs> Roger, do, do doing, doing the Bond movies, does it get easier in any way, or does it get more difficult in any way? Um, How do you describe it? I, didn't, it, it, it gets, I think it's difficult from the production point of view of trying to find new and different things to do. Not just the uh, new gadgets, but really new stunts, things that haven't been done. You know, for example, I said before I read the first draft of the script, I said, you know, come on, where are we going, fellas? Well, we've been looking at San Francisco. Oh, San Francisco. I said, it's going to be another car chase. Right. I mean, and with the cars what, taking off yeah, on you the know, hills. from bullet on, it's been that. And they said, well, we've got another way of doing it. And I said, well, I'd be interested to see how. Challenge, and, challenge. And of course, yeah. it, it is. It's, it's, a, it's a, a very funny chase. It's because we use a fire engine. No, wait, no, wait, no, wait, and say, my mother is just, I mean, she, my mother is a big fan of yours. They started that a long time ago. It started with, with, uh, with leading ladies who said, my mother worked with you in Ivanhoe and things like that, you know, which is wonderful. They were talking about the original Ivanhoe, you know, I mean, right. way back in 1400. What about the, the, uh, the Bond movies? How have they changed from the beginning? I mean, that was pretty racy stuff back in the early ones. You know, if you remember, Ursula Andress came out of the water wearing what today would be an overdressed bikini. That's right. And they immediately said, God, this is sexy, and there was a problem with the censor. Today, you know, every other film, they're doing full frontal nudity and not necessarily getting an R rating. 
we have a battle to keep a PG rating because as Cubby has always said, you know, this is family entertainment we're making and it's got to be fun. So there is nothing licentious uh, in a bond. Roger, it's so good to see you. It always is. Thank you. Thank you. Nice good, seeing you. Good luck with this one. Thank you. We'll be back. In our next hour, Sally Field and Lily Tomlin. James Bond, dashing, brave, clever, but where would he be without those evil masterminds who keep the world in constant peril and bond in top form? Well, in the spirit of fair play, we'll uh, give three of Bond's most colorful and dastardly foes equal time. Christopher Walken, believe it or not, Bond's latest opponent, plays the mad industrialist and renegade KGB agent Max Zorin. This is, of course, in A View to Kill. And joining us from London, Christopher Lee, Dean of Villains, uh, the man with a golden gun, one of Bond's most confident, one of the most deadly foes, and Richard Keel played the lovable Jaws in both The Spy Who Loved Me and Moonraker, a man who never needed to say very much to get his point across. And joining me, of course, 007, Roger Moore. Hi, Roger. Good morning. Hi, Chris. Richard, good to have you with us. Chris, over in London, good to have you with us today. Hi. Thank you. How are you? Just terrific. Thank you. Chris Lee, what does it take? You have, you have played, you know, you're the villain of villains. I mean, you have made a wonderful career out beating a nasty, villainous, awful person. What does it take? What are the, the, the keys to being villainous and believably so? Well, you mean uh, in a Bond movie or in general? Make, well, make the distinction. Make the distinction. Well, there is a distinction. There is a distinction, I think, because in a Bond film, I think that the villain, in a way, is probably the dark side of Bond. I think I have pretty good authority for saying that, because Ian Fleming was my cousin. And naturally, until he died, I talked to him at enormous length on many occasions, mostly on the golf course, the same course he describes in Goldfinger, about the stories about Bond, who he was based on, and about, of course, the villains. Now, in the case of the Bond villains, as Christopher Walken said, they are very colorful, they have to be somewhat larger than life, rather exotic, and as Ian himself said to me, in a way, the other side, the dark side of Bond. This is the part I really like. That's what I call solar power. That's what I call trouble. But to play, to play, to play a villain, I, I only had the chance <coughs> on a couple of occasions to play somebody who was not particularly nice. But I, the director told me, always play the villain as though he were the hero because yes. to, you must believe in what you're doing. We'll be back with more from the villains of James Bond after this. <laughs>